One of, one of the things that I do in my work is I uh, try and help organisations think about their organisation as a system, as a complex system that it has to work, and also to think about their organisation's place in a much broader system, whether that's human services, disability systems, whatever. Um, having worked in a management school for a number of years, one of the downsides I see in many management education courses still is that we adopt a fairly linear approach to thinking about how systems work. And so we think that if we do this intervention here, then that will cause these effects um, and that it's a very linear process. Uh, things like strategic planning give people a sense. Well, we, we, we do a process, we come up with a strategic plan and then we go and chase the strategic plan. In reality, Life doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way for organisations. It doesn't happen that way for individuals. And so complex systems theory is a way of understanding and thinking about uh, how systems work in actual reality. So an organisation that, for example, has done a strategic plan, that's fantastically helpful for giving them a vision, a sense of direction and where they want to be. Life will not unfold in a direct path and line to that goal of what they've put forward, but it will go one step forward, a step sideways, another step forward, a step backwards, um, and that's the way that life happens. That happens, life happens that way for individuals as well. And so complex systems theory tries to unpack systems and to see what are some of the dynamics that are at play in the system. Um, and the origin of that comes from the biological and the physical sciences, so things like chaos theory, very much predicated on that idea. Ecology, very much built around complex systems, dynamics. In my experience, most organisations in whatever field don't think of their organisations in terms of complex systems. And therefore, what they set out to do, and the way they engage in doing it sometimes, uh, is not realistic and will rarely work, and certainly not work very well. So what do we know about systems, complex systems theory? Well, some of the things we know are that in any system, there are patterns, and the patterns repeat at a micro level right through to a macro level. And you can look on the internet for you know, something called fractals, and you'll find images and images and images of these repeating patterns. Snowflakes are an example of a repeating pattern within a snowflake, and all different. Um, families, if you look at a family as a social system, you will find that the way that family members relate to each other tends to form patterns over time. And so for a couple that have been married for a long time, as their kids reach adulthood and leave home, that changes the dynamic in the family home and often causes something of a crisis in the couple's relationship because the dynamic has changed. I think we avoid and fail to recognise these things at our peril. But these dynamics are observable and they're, they're really apparent, these patterns, in organisations. Um, and so what you, if you want to understand some of an organisation's patterns, you could sit in on meetings, for example, and observe a meeting. And the kind of dynamics you see at play in the meeting, how well people are engaged, how big the meeting is, how much action, uh, and, and engagement happens around the discussion, how much reading there is, you will find more or less that that sort of pattern will repeat in lots and lots of meetings up and down the hierarchy of the organisation. If you want to change what's happening in an organisation, like an organisation's culture, then there's a whole, what, you, what you're trying to do is to set out and change the pattern. And in order to change the pattern, you actually have to work towards a tipping point. So a tipping point it was that, that that idea was popularised by Malcolm Gladwell's book, um, The Tipping Point, and it refers to the phenomenon of something will incrementally and slowly build to a point and then suddenly it gathers momentum. In, in organisations, one of the realities that organisations can come up against is that they will have a program or a plan for building in some change and changing the system. Um, but they may get so far down the track and what they haven't actually recognised is that any of these patterns that are deeply, deeply embedded, um, we call a deep culture of the organisation. And those are very, very hard to change and, very hard, and they need concerted effort over quite um, a long period of time. 
John Cotter has written probably the, still the touchstone book on managing change and leading change. Sorry, it's not managing change, it's leading change. Um, and he has some really good points in the eight stages that he puts forward. The first one is building a compelling case for change. And I think that many organisations don't even do that and build a coalition of change agents around a compelling case. What Bruce Bonahady spoke about this morning when he was describing the NDIS was very much putting together that compelling case for change at every level um, and that I think has got the capacity to get people on board. The other dynamic that comes in a bit further down the track in the change process is that these deep systems start to come back again because people think we're there, we've arrived and then they get white handed so I think that's one of the dangers the NDIS certainly has, is that we will think we've arrived and we'll end up with just a bigger version of what we had before, which will be an abject disappointment for many of us if that's what happens. So it is about, re again, recognising patterns and recognising that the feedback loops that maintain patterns are also important. So feedback loops are another feature of complex systems and in order to uh, change or create a tipping point in order to change a system's dynamics, dominant dynamics, you need to be able to change the feedback loops. So in organisations it's really a case of recognising that um, these there are feedback loops that will always work to maintain the status quo and so the change needs to be building in and building in so that the feedback loops become absolutely endemic that, re that reinforce the new paradigm, the new, new approach you want. I think the other thing that kicks in is that people want quick, quick fixes and we're a very instant society and creating deep and revolutionary change takes time and takes a heck of a lot of work. Uh, so that and I think we're just averse to having even the capacity to do that these days.